This video will show you how to plot error bars from an analysis of variance. So the data set we're going to use is the iron levels in Chesapeake Bay. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load the tidyverse, because we'll be using some functions from that. Then we're going to read in the iron level data set. Remember, this is the iron level data set collected at different water depths in Chesapeake Bay. So we'll use read underscore CSV to read in that data. And the first thing we want to do is uh, this first step to make a box plot of the data at the various water depths. And so we've seen this box plot before. And so as you might see, as you might remember, uh, there are uh, don't seem to be very much difference in terms of the iron content at very low water depths. But as you increase in water depth in the bay, you get higher iron contents in the bay. And so one thing that we'll want to do, because the data are stored, the water depths are stored as uh, numbers, we want to convert them to a factor. Uh, and all that's going to say is that, well, uh, the factors are, we can think of them as treatments, 0 feet, 10 feet, 30 feet, and so forth, into the bay. And so we're going to use the mutate function from the tidyverse and make a new variable called depth.fact for the factor variable uh, for depth. So we'll run that, and then we'll run the analysis of variance. Um, and so we're going to call this iron.aov. We're going to use the lm function. Uh, we're going to predict the iron content based on that depth.factor variable that we just calculated. And then we're going to plot the ANOVA table for the iron.aov object. And so we can see that um, for the depth.factor variable, it looks like water depth indeed does matter in terms of iron content. Uh, and so we know because we have a very, very small p-value here um, that we are going to be able to uh, now run multiple comparisons. And so to run multiple comparisons, uh, we're going to look, I encourage you to look at page 132 in the introduction, uh, introductory statistics with our book, uh, where he talks about this pairwise t.test function. Um, and so what we do here, because we're predicting, we want to know the iron levels, uh, and we are predicting it based on the factor depth variable, we can enter those, and then we can say adjust the p-values based on the Bonferroni multiple comparison. And so there are lots of values you can put in here. For our cases, we're going to run a multiple comparison test using the Bonferroni multiple comparison procedure. And so we'll uh, run that. And what you can see is happening here, uh, so we have all the water depths along the horizontal here and along the vertical, and what you're seeing are what we call the pairwise comparisons, uh, or basically all those t-tests being run. And so what you see are p-values being adjusted based on the Bonferroni method uh, that compare each of the water depths. And so as you might see, 0 compared to 10, 0 compared to 30, 0 compared to 40, 0, 50, 0, 100. Uh, and so you have this matrix here of all of the p-values uh, that show all of the differences. And so you can see that between 0 and 10, the p-value is essentially 1, indicating there's not any significant difference there. Uh, same thing for 0 and 30. There's no difference between those two. And that makes sense based on our graph, right? And so there's really not much difference in the iron level content between 0, 10, and 30 feet. But if we look at comparing 0 and 40 feet, well, yeah, we can see, even in the box plot, that there are some differences there. And what do you know? We get a p-value of 0 0.018, which, if we were looking at a, a standard level of significance of 0 0.05, we might call that significantly different. And so the same for comparing 0 and 50 feet. Again, we have a, a small p-value, 0.03 and comparing 0 and 100. And so we have quite a small p-value there, which would certainly indicate differences between 0 feet and 100 feet if we were to sample the iron content levels. And so we can compare those for the other water depths, too, and compare this, this matrix that we're looking at. And so you're getting the p-values here. And so that's helpful. We get the p-values. So we can compare and see which ones are different but there is a way to make it easier for us. And so we're going to use this Agricola package, which is a handy package for doing multiple comparison tests and getting significant 
uh, letters that denote the significant differences across the different treatments. And so you can install the package if you haven't installed it and then run it with library. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a new object called lsd.bonf for our least significant difference Bonferroni multiple comparison procedure uh, using this LSD test function. And so this is just a function that allows us to do the multiple comparison test. We've already run an ANOVA. Remember, we called that iron.aov. What we want to compare against is the depth that factor variable. And so we write that and put that in quotes. And then we want to adjust the p-values just like we did for the pairwise t-test using the Bonferroni method. And so that's what we'll, uh, what we'll do there. And so we could run this. And the output that you see, you can see it gives you lots of output. Uh, it gives you some statistics about what you're running against, things like the mean and the coefficient of variation. Uh, it gives you some parameters, kind of a re says, OK, you're doing the Bonferroni test. And then it gives you the means for um, all the different iron levels, the standard deviation, how many there are, lower and upper confidence intervals, minimum, maximum, quantiles at the 25th, 50th, and 75th uh, quantiles. Um, the important thing uh, is what it does when it prints out the different groups. And so it has the mean values here and then also the groups. And so what has in groups, those are our letters denoting significant differences. So remember, if it's the same letter, the two treatments are not significantly different. So as we can see, like between 0 and 10 feet into the lake or into the bay, there are not any significant differences. And so you can see that the 100, if we sample the 100 feet into the bay, that is the only one that's significantly different from everything else. So it has its own letter denoting a, it's significantly different from all of the other water depths. And so that's some important information, those uh, different letters that you get there. The next thing we might wanna do, we might wanna summarize these by depth. So we made the box plots, but we haven't really gotten the mean values. And so we can just run some, some tidyverse code. We're gonna group by each depth factor. And then we're going to summarize, we're going to get the number of observations, the mean values, and the standard deviations. So we can run that. And we have a new iron sum data set. So we're going to calculate a standard error on that too. So we can just take calculate the standard error. We use the mutate function. We're going to make a new variable called se.iron for the standard error of the iron levels. And remember, the standard error is just the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of observations. And so we can uh, highlight that. And we have this iron sum data set that gives us the number of observations, the mean, standard deviation, and the standard error. So our next step is we'll create a bar plot. Uh, and so we eventually are kind of coming to, you know, we have this data. We might not want to show the box plots, but instead a bar plot with letters denoting uh, significant differences with error bars. And so to first create the bar plot, uh, we're going to work on this data set here, this iron sum data set. And we're going to plot the depth um, on the x-axis and the mean content on the y-axis. Uh, we're going to plot a bar plot. And then I just rename the x and y axes here. And so this might look familiar, but we're seeing, again, just the mean values here um, of 0, 10, 30, all the way up to 100 feet in water depth. Now, we need to calculate the values that we'll use for the error bars. And so I'm going to make a new value called limits. And this is going to be an aesthetic object. And it's going to have two values. It's going to have a y max. What's the maximum value of my error bar? And then what's the minimum value of my error bar? And so in this case, my maximum, I'm just going to do the mean plus the standard error for my maximum, and then the mean minus the standard error for my minimum. And that will give me a, 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 some error bars around uh, my mean uh, values here that I can show in my bar plot. So I can run that. And that's just a, an R object. Uh, so you can see it's a list of of two objects here. 
So now I can make the bar plot with those uh, standard error bars that also have the significant differences. So the key thing here, same thing, I'm going to make uh, uh, the iron sum data set. I'm going to plot the depth factor on the x-axis. I'm going to plot the mean value on the y-axis. And it's going to be a bar plot. What we can do in ggplot is we can type geome error bar. And this will be the values that we just produced in that limits. So the limits are going to be the mean plus the standard error and the mean minus the standard error. Uh, and we're going to set, you can also set the width of those error bars. Uh, so I put it at 0.25, so they'll be kind of narrow, but you can set that to any size you want. Again, I'm going to rename the x and y axes. And then the important thing, to get those letters of significant differences, I can write a geome text. And so my genome text here is going to be an aesthetic object, and I can label it CCCBBA. I'm getting those values directly from my output when I ran the um, lsd.test function. So I remember back to our output where we got the output for A's, B's, and C's denoting our significant differences. And then the VJust, is this how you vertically adjust those values, those text values, the letters A, B, C, as they are printed on the screen. And sometimes you'll have to play with that uh, to get it to look kind of just right for your plot. The last thing I do, I don't know that we've done this in class yet, but I'm going to write scale Y continuous. Because sometimes when you plot error bars, uh, it R doesn't recognize the width of those error bars. And so it will plot the mean values just fine. But it won't plot the, uh, it won't incorporate a little bit bigger space so that you can fit those error bars in. And so scale y continuous allows you to set the limits of the y axis. So you can see in this graph it goes from 0 to about 0.2. What I'm going to do with scale y continuous is set my limits to 0 and then 0.3. So it'll make it a little bit uh, bigger to uh, fit in those error bars on those letters. And so we can highlight this, click run. And voila, I'll zoom in on this, make it nice and big. So we can see here our iron content, uh, same bar plot that we were looking at before. Uh, we've got three different levels here of uh, CCC. Uh, so there's no difference for 0, 10, and 30 feet. Now we can see that 40 and, and 50 feet are quite a bit different than, uh, are significantly different than 0, 10, and 30, and significantly different from 100. Uh, and then we can see that 100 is uh, significantly different from everything else because it has its own letter. Uh, and you can see like this example here, this B uh, looks like it's not, it's not, it's within the error bar. So we might want to play around with some of that V just um, thing I just made uh, in the R code. So uh, there are some tweaking you can do when you get to this stage, uh, some tidying up of the grass, which you can easily do in some of the ggplot code. And so that does it. That's how we might plot a uh, bar graph with error bars with letters of significant difference denoting differences uh, across different treatments. And this is really common. This is often a, uh, a last figure in a manuscript or in a thesis that really shows different, uh, easy way to show significant differences across different treatments. So really commonly used uh, in the life sciences.